Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, another antenna experiment I've been working on this week. So I made the six meter cage dipole um, a little while back and uh, measured the increase in bandwidth of going with the cage design. And I was uh, interested in seeing how much wider uh, an antenna gets on the HF frequencies. Um, there's lots of information out there about cage dipoles. But I thought, let's apply the cage idea to the end-fed half-wave antenna and see if we still see an increase in bandwidth uh, similar to what we see on all the other antennas that we've tried it with. So that's what I built this week. Um, I built an end-fed half-wave uh, antenna for 20 meters uh, using the 49 to 1 uh, matching network made popular by Steve Ellington. And uh, it works, uh, and it's wider. Uh, but let's uh, let's look at the build first off. I uh, here's the design, and I uh, designed the 3D er, and 3D printed the spacers uh, for the antenna wires to space them out about six inches uh, in diameter. Um, and uh, that's basically the antenna. It's just the classic end-fed half wave. Uh, the only difference being we're using six wires and spacing them out to make a wider diameter. Um, main element and get that broader bandwidth. So yeah, first thing I had to do was uh, print the spacers and uh, I fired up the 3D printer. I designed it in uh, Tinkercad. Uh, <laughs> I know Tinkercad's kind of like Legos um, and it's pretty low end and simple, but I like it for quick projects. And this was just a quick and easy design to slap together in Tinkercad and then 3D print. And I needed five spacers. And so we ran the 3D printer for pretty much most of a day. It took about 50 minutes each to uh, get the uh, spacers printed out. And then I went about assembling the antenna. And you can see it here, um, stretched between the mast and the RV as I was working on it. And it was a little tricky getting those wires all nice and straight um, and taut, equally taut. Uh, but uh, it came together pretty well. Um, the uh, Spacers, I used uh, super glue. After I got the wires all nice and straight and uh, taut, I uh, put a little dab of super glue where each wire went through the spacer to lock them in place. And that's the finished antenna right there. Uh, so, uh, what did we do? Well, let's uh, do my usual tests. I went to scan it with the VNA and do some whisper. Let's take a look at those results. Starting out with measurements on the single wire and fed half wave, the standard antenna, we see a whisper transmit. Now I was uh, transmitting at 100 milliwatts. I had the ICOM 705 set to zero power out, which it puts out about 100 milliwatts. And this is the single wire. Uh, you can see that uh, it got picked up a few places. This was 20 meters uh, late morning. Propagation wasn't that great, but uh, hey, even at 100 milliwatts, I made it out to Hawaii. Now to compare that, to the cage version of the antenna. A few more hits, but still pretty much the same footprint, and I still made it out to Hawaii with my 100 milliwatts. I didn't really expect there to be much difference. It's probably a little bit more sensitive, and you probably get out a little bit better because of the larger size of the antenna, and there's just more copper there. But pretty much the same footprint transmitting on Whisper. So the next thing I did is I hooked up the VNA and we took a look at a the single wire version of the antenna, the common antenna. And here is a sweep of 20 meters and we can see the bottom edge um, where we reach 2 to 1 SWR is 13.3. And the top of the antenna is at 14.81. Uh, that gives us a bandwidth um, of 1.51 megahertz uh, for the single wire uh, version of the antenna. And the lowest SWR that we received on that an, uh, antenna was pretty good, 1.13 to 1 with 56.2 ohms, right there at 14 megahertz. Um, it's, it, it covers the entire 20 meter band easily staying under 1.5 to 1 with the single wire. So just the single wire antenna is fine. Now, let's look at the cage um, antenna. So the bottom edge at 2 to 1 
and uh, a weird little sort of flat plateau there towards the middle. Um, not quite sure why, but that seemed to happen with the cage. But anyway, uh, the bottom edge where we see 2 to 1 is 12.6 megahertz. The uh, top edge is at 14.96. So that gives us a bandwidth of 2.36 megahertz, a full 1.56 times greater. So one and a half times the bandwidth of the regular single wire antenna. Quite an improvement. So playing around with the antenna, uh, 20 meters was pretty bad this week. We've, we had some pretty good solar wind, but I did manage to uh, make a few PSK31 QSOs. Uh, this guy is in Missouri, over 1,200 miles away. And then I checked into a, a net with uh, Kermit over in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, I was saying, uh, I'm waiting for the propagation to come back. And uh, uh, I, probably, I think I can copy a little bit. You know, the handle here is Kermit, K-E-R-M-I-T, Kermit in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Call sign KB5. Uh, we're too close. We're skipping over. Yeah, today. And, uh, good down Baja. Say again, your Kingman, Arizona. Kingman, Arizona. Kingman, Arizona. Over. Okay. I'm going to swing just a little bit down towards Arizona. It might help us. Anyway, we'll see what happens there. Uh, you came up one S unit. You came up one S unit. You're about an S8, an S8 now. Uh, I'm running 10 watts, 10 watts into an end fed half wave cage antenna. Over. Okay, well, thank you for uh, checking in. Any traffic today? Over. Negative, negative. No traffic. Just checking in to say hello. Over. QSL, thanks for taking the time to pick me up. 73 and have a good day. This is KV9RLW, back to net. We did have a pretty good windstorm uh, while I was testing this antenna. We had 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, and it danced around a little bit in the wind, as you can see, but uh, the wires all stayed straight. Uh, the insulators held up. And, uh, oh yeah, I know, PLA is a plastic, sun will break it down, but uh, this antenna is not going to be up for 10 years. Um, and even if you did put it up, you know, and one of those insulators cracked or failed after a couple of years, you could just print another one. So, that's the antenna. Um, interesting, and uh, interesting results, and yeah, we saw that it's definitely broader. What would be the advantages to something like this? Well, if you took the idea and extended it to, say, an 80 meter end-fed half wave, so you'd have more bands covered. Um, the end-fed half wave covers the harmonic bands going up in frequency. So, 80, 40, 20, and 10 meters. Uh, and definitely the entirety of like a big one like the 10 meter band or the 80 meter band probably um, by going to a cage you you wouldn't need a tuner uh, for anywhere you operate on those bands I'm sure you know so it's it, it probably has some uh, viable use there for me it was just an interesting experiment to uh, measure that increase uh, how practical is it though I don't know the unfed half wave wire is still pretty broad and covers a lot of the bands with minimal use of an antenna transmatch or tuner uh, so, you know, in and of itself, it's a good antenna to go with. Uh, building it as a cage, I don't know how practical that is. There might be some use cases where it's uh, an advantage, you know, but uh, we definitely now know that it does, as with the other antennas, provide a fairly decent increase in the bandwidth of the antenna. I hope you found that interesting, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.